Hi guys, my name is Ben Guilford. I'm the owner of The Firebrick Company and I'm really excited to be introducing our series on how to build a stand to build your wood-fired oven on. Uh, this has been something that we've been wanting to do for a long time uh, and we're really excited to bring it to you. Uh, we've gone into as much detail as we can to make building a stand to build your wood-fired oven on as easy as possible. So in this video, we're gonna go over some general design ideas, uh, things to think about before you actually build your stand, uh, a few things to think about to make sure that it ends up in the right location, uh, that you're in compliance with maybe some local rules, uh, and that you think about, say, block or brick wall layouts that will maximize your firewood space while still giving you a really good structural support. First thing I would suggest is download the PDF from our website on how to build an oven stand. Uh, it's fairly easy to find. If you go to any of the pages that talk about our wood-fired oven kits, you will find a link there to download the instructions for building the stand. Uh, and this video is effectively to complement those instructions and take you through the process. First step is choosing a location. Uh, now, we're in our showroom here. Uh, in our lovely uh, factory in Hallam, and we are setting up our test kitchen. And we've decided that we're gonna build the oven into this corner here. We're gonna have our D105 built, uh, and then over here, we're gonna build another one. Our P85 is gonna be facing back towards it. Uh, now, we've made that decision having looked at the area uh, and, and thought through a few of the considerations that you really should think about before you build an oven. Uh, so we're, we're fairly fortunate here in that we get to build one indoors. And hey, a lot of our customers build these ovens indoors into in, enclosed or semi-enclosed alfresco areas, even fully indoors inside restaurants and things like that. So there are a few things to consider when you're planning where to put your wood-fired oven. One of the first things that I tell people to think about is if you can have the oven under cover, fantastic. Now, I say that with you know a clause. It doesn't have to be under cover. These ovens are designed such that they can live outdoors. But if you can have even the mouth of the oven under cover, it means that you can be under cover when you're using it. And that's, that's critical. Actually, a great example of this. I love my dad. And he's actually the one who got me started in all of this. Uh, and he built his very first pizza oven down in this beautiful corner of our yard. He has a, a lovely property down in Gippsland, gorgeous garden that he spent years working on. And he built the oven down in this beautiful little grassy corner with the trees all around, gorgeous. Uh, but it's out in the open. And uh, Gippsland is fairly well known for its rain. Uh, and so almost every time we would have a pizza party, I'd be down there holding an umbrella over dad while he's cooking the pizzas. Uh, and so when I started the business, one of the first things I did was I said, dad, we gotta, we gotta do something about this. We're gonna build you a new one and we're gonna make it so that it's actually in under the, the veranda, under the, the patio area. So now dad can use the oven nice and dry. So that's the first thing I suggest is if you can make sure uh, the mouth of the oven is undercover so that when you're using it, you can be undercover. Now, an important message to all of our wonderful Northern Hemisphere customers. If you live in an area uh, that experiences significant cold conditions, I mean, a place where you get into proper freezing, where the ground actually freezes down to a certain depth, um, then you need to consider uh, how you're going to build your oven, where you're going to build it, and how you're going to protect it from the weather. Uh, the reason I say this is, as you, you'll see in these build videos, the materials that make up the oven are quite porous. They soak up water quite readily. Uh, so if you look at the front of our oven, you'll see that it's exposed. We have exposed fire brick on the front, which looks gorgeous. Uh, but the problem with that in an area that experiences freeze-thaw is that if you just build your oven outdoors uh, and leave it out in the weather, getting rain and sleet and snow on it, then water will penetrate into the brick uh, and soak into the bricks and then into the insulation uh, and sit there. And when winter comes around and uh, the 
ground starts to freeze, the water starts to freeze as the temperature drops, the water that's trapped in the oven will freeze and expand and cause movement and cracking that we really don't want. Okay, so if you're building your oven in an area that gets ridiculously cold, then you're going to need to find a way to protect the oven from rain. Uh, so we really recommend if you are in an area that um, gets that cold, that you build the oven under a shelter so that it's kept dry all the time. Uh, so that way you're not gonna have to worry at all about the cold conditions, and you get the added bonus of being able to use your oven rain, hail, or shine all year round. If you're in an area uh, that's you know gets a little bit of snow and some frost, this is not a problem. Uh, we're talking about places where the ground actually heaves uh, as uh, the, the water in it freezes as it gets into winter. Um, so if you're you know in the southern hemisphere and you're if you're in Australia, for example, you're building your ovens, they can live outdoors, and that bit of water that gets absorbed into the oven from the rain, hey, the next time you fire the oven that'll drive that out and your oven will be dry again. Uh, so this is just a message for all you guys in Europe, and Canada and Norway, uh, you know, and Northern USA. Um, make sure you keep that in mind when you build one of our ovens. Another consideration is council requirements. Now, these ovens are being built all around the world and local councils, God bless them, uh, do have different requirements uh, all over the place. So to be safe, check with your local council if they do have any requirements. They may have, uh, a common one is um, clearance to your fence uh, or to your property line. Um, uh, another one might be just being generally considerate where your flue is. Um, when you fire the oven, the first 10 minutes or so, it's gonna be a bit smoky and you really don't want to frustrate your neighbors if you don't have to. So if you can, Think about the location of the oven, keeping that in mind, then you, you know, hey, you might end up with better relationships with the neighbors. So if in doubt, contact your local council just to make sure there aren't any rules or regulations that you need to comply with in your area. So ground conditions are another thing to think about. If you're looking around at different areas to build the oven, if you can choose an area that has good ground conditions, it's well drained, uh, it's got nice solid clay underneath it, that's ideal. Uh, hey, the area that you're in, might that might not be an option. But again, if you have the option, you know, go for an area that's got really good ground conditions. The first step in building a good oven stand is getting the size right. Before you even start, before you even do foundations or start digging, first decide on the size of oven that you want to build. Now in the PDF that you can download on our website, we've got really detailed instructions taking you through the process of uh, setting out the right size for your stand. And a lot of the time it's a little bit bigger than you might have imagined. Uh, we have detailed designs for all of our ovens. So for example, if you were interested in our D105 pre-cut brick oven kit, we have detailed uh, layout drawings showing you all the different dimensions of the oven and suggested dimensions of the oven stand to build. So give you plenty of room to build the oven on it and create a landing area and things like that. So make sure you download those before you even start. Download those drawings, figure out the size of oven that you want to build and make sure you build a stand that will handle that. I can't tell you how many people have called us saying, I'd like to build a pizza oven. I've built a stand, I'm ready to go. Uh, the stand is, uh, it's a meter by a meter. And I hear that and I'm like, oh no, that's, it sounds big, but it's actually, for a wood-fired oven, it's, it's very small. Uh, so make sure, figure out the oven that you want to build first. And I'm not saying you have to build one of ours, uh, but figure out the size of the oven that you want to build and then make sure you build a stand that's gonna fit that oven on it. So the first step in building a stand is going to be to establish good foundations. Uh, now you're going to notice we're here in a factory, in a showroom. Uh, it already has a concrete floor and you're thinking, how is he going to show us how to build our foundations? He's already got foundations. And that's absolutely right. We, we're actually not going to show you 
how to build the foundations in this video. And there's a, one really good reason for that. Um, it feels like a bit of a cop out, but we have to be careful uh, not to put ourselves in a legally sticky situation. If we were to suggest, you know, show you how to build foundations that would be based on ideal ground conditions, and um, these ovens and these stands can be very heavy, they can weigh five metric tons. And if you were to build foundations um, in your area that maybe weren't quite strong enough, you followed our instructions, but they weren't strong enough for your ground conditions, you may have um, potentially have a structural issue. Uh, and so we need to be a little careful, which sucks. I hate being careful. Uh, so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna tell you to jump on the website, download the PDF, which takes you through the foundation instructions. It takes in a lot of detail, there's drawings there, there's photos, tells you about what reinforcing bar that we use and so on. Um, but those instructions are based on really good ground conditions. That's hard, well-drained clay. Uh, if you don't have that, uh, then we'd highly recommend that you speak to a local builder or contractor. Just get some advice. Maybe, maybe you've had someone come and help out with a concrete slab for your garage or a shed or even your home. Uh, they'll know, they'll be intimately acquainted with your ground conditions at your home and they'll be able to give you some advice on how to make your foundations. A really good example of this is uh, in America, uh, North America, where you're getting freeze thaw conditions. If you were to build our normal um, concrete foundation slab that we recommend in the uh, PDF instructions, you may have issues with freeze thaw where the ground is heaving uh, as the frost penetrates down into it. Uh, so again, because these ovens are being built all around the world, we just wanna make sure that you end up with something that's gonna be right for you uh, and it's gonna stand the test of time. So make sure, contact a local uh, builder uh, or someone who can give you some advice on your foundations if you're not confident that you have good ground to start with. Jump on our website and have a look through the different ovens that we have. We've got a variety of wood-fired oven kits available and we've made sure to upload as much information as possible about those ovens to the website so you can download it for free uh, and get a real good head start on building your oven before you even buy one. We're building a D105 pre-cut oven kit, uh, so we need to get the stand layout uh, to make sure that we lay out our block work in the right area and we set out the foundations or you would be setting out your foundations uh, to make sure you can fit the particular stand that you're wanting to build we're going to be building into the corner so jump on the website and we'll go and we'll jump to the d105 corner stand all right so that straight away is going to bring up a pdf uh, which gives us all the dimensions everything we need to know about uh, the stand uh, for the D105, building it into the corner. So we have our block layout here. Uh, now, again, we're, we're building into a corner. You might be doing a straight on build, so you might want a rectangular stand. We've got a variety of different files on the website that you can download uh, and have a look. Uh, and it'll show you all the different layouts that you could use. So you can see here, we have a nice detailed layout showing us how we're gonna set out our block work for building the D105 stand. I should say at this point, you're thinking, all right, block, block work, um, which blocks are you using? We're using a product called Adbri Versalock blocks. Uh, you might have maybe come across something similar uh, in retaining wall blocks where they basically clip together. They don't need to be mortared together. They sit on top of each other and they have interlocking sections that help them all stay nice and straight. Uh, so we use the Adbri Versalock 150 series. It's plain. It's a plain concrete finish. The 150 is re uh, referring to the width of the blocks. Uh, and in these files that you can download, you're gonna find actually a list of all the blocks that you would need to use to build that particular stand. So for our stand here, we need 52 straight blocks. We need eight full ends, which are shown in red. We need eight half ends, shown in yellow. Uh, we need six right corners and six left corners which is shown in green and blue. We love the Adbri Versalock blocks. Now we don't like get any kickbacks from Adbri or anything like that, but 
they work. Um, we used to use normal cinder blocks or besser blocks, they're often referred to as, uh, and they work really well uh, also. They're readily available, but you do need to mortar them together. They are designed to be mortared together. Uh, without mortar, you end up with um, lots of gaps. Um, trust me, try it and you'll, you'll see. So again, nothing wrong with using normal cinder blocks. If that's what you have available, go for it. But we would recommend mortaring those together if you do. Uh, we're going to use the Adbri Versa Lock blocks because they're relatively easy to use. Uh, all we have to do is stack them up like big Lego, and then we're going to pour the hollow cores of the blocks full of concrete. Uh, and that's what's going to lock them all together. Something else you can find on our website for when you're designing a stand is the SketchUp files. Uh, SketchUp is a free drawing program. It's an online drawing tool that you can use to do um, 3D design. It's fantastic. Uh, really, really well worth getting into. If you're a little bit uh, into design and you like drawing things on the computer, SketchUp is a great place to start. And we've uh, drawn all of our stands in SketchUp so that you can download the stand uh, model and draw your alfresco or your outdoor area around it uh, and use it to effectively design your alfresco area. So we've downloaded our SketchUp file uh, and this is the layout of the blocks. Now guys, if you're not into 3D design, please don't worry about this step. You don't really need to do this, but for the nerds out there, get into it. I love 3D design, it's really good fun. Uh, so we've got our oven model here on screen, uh, which you can see the D105, the layout here is shown, uh, we, we've done a cross section view of it, so you can see the different layers, uh, so where, there's your oven floor area, you've got your, your brickwork, your insulating blanket and your perlite render around that. Uh, so that's all shown. We've also shown this particular one with a granite landing in front. Uh, I've talked about landings in the past. I love having a granite landing there. As we've said before, it's a great area to pull out a big roast or a big tray and see it and see what's going on. You know, open it up and turn it and prod it and check your temperatures and then put it back in again. Uh, so you'll see this particular design has room for our oven landing in the front. Uh, so guys, if you are into design and, and you maybe you've used SketchUp in the past, feel free to download those files and have a play with them and use them to help you set out your oven.